graph of functions. Okay, you have to memorize some graphs for the calculus sequences one, two, and three. And let me list some of the graphs that you should absolutely memorize. Y equal to x squared, which is this problem. Y equals to square root of x. This is a half of a parabola that's opening to the right. Y equals to x cubed. And this is not a function, but still important that you know the graph of it. It's x squared plus y squared equal to 1 is what? Circle. It's a circle. Why is this not a function? Because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. If you draw the vertical line, it meets more than once. This is not a graph of a function. Um, then you have uh, y equals to 1 over x, the simplest rational function, which is like that. And geometrically, the name for this curve is it's a hyperbola. <coughs> so these are the most basic polynomial and rational functions and radical functions. Um, to give you some general idea of how other polynomials look like, if you have y equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, then it's just some kind of a problem. Either like this when a is positive and maybe like this, upside down if a is negative. And the other values, B and C, kind of changes the position of the vertex. Y equal to A cubed plus BX squared plus CX plus D. This, because this has more parameters, there are more variety of shapes. Uh, I just want to show you what happens when, when A is positive. When A is positive, you may have two turning points, like this, or you may have just a single point where it briefly, briefly stops increasing and then increase again. Or it could just curve like this, but without really having a turning point. So these, these give You've learned that as turning points. What are, what, are, what are the turning points? A turning point is a point where uh, it changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. If that happens, you, you call that point a turning point. Okay? Now in calculus one, later on in this class, you're going to learn these with a different name. Uh, these will be called relative extrema. And the one that's higher than the neighboring sections will be called relative max. And this one, because it's lower than the neighboring ones, this is called relative minimum. We'll, we'll touch on that later. So um, this, just, this is just giving you a heads up. All right. Here, and there's also some place here where the, the concavity changes. This is like concave, this is concave down and that's concave up, concave down, concave up, and then here also. Uh, these points where the concavity changes will be later called the inflection point. Inflection, or point of inflection. As you can see, all cubic curves have exactly one point of inflection. But it may, have extrema, 
or it may not. Now, well, what's going to happen if A is negative? What will be the shape? It will be all turned upside down, right? If A is negative, you have three possibilities. It will be upside down. Upside down. Now, I also have to teach you the graphs of sine, cosine, tangent, and also the graphs of exponents and exponential functions and logarithms, but we're going to deal with that tomorrow. But all these things that's drawn here, you should memorize them. All right, using this, let's go over some transformations. Let's talk, talk about reflections. Let me do reflections in a separate. 